Hi, this is a program, What's Happening, which occurs about every month to discuss the state of our very chaotic world. I believe it's called What's Going On. What's Going On rather than What's Happening. Well, that, what's Happening was a show in the 70s. You remember something <laughs> right, about right. this guy, Mark. Right. He doesn't know anything about Marvin Gaye. Okay. So What's Going On and What's Happening is sort of the yeah. same okay. album, I think, isn't it? Right. right. Anyway, so my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with Mark Estrin and Kurt Maida to talk about what's going on in the world today. And I guess we'll start with something that's very local, which is the whole uh, issue involving Burlington Telecom. And we want to remind our viewers that the decision to sell Burlington Telecom, which is a city-owned utility um, at this point, is on the city council for debate tonight. And it's a very important meeting. The mayor is going to decide, essentially, to sell Burlington Telecom either to an out-of-state company. I think it might be a Canadian company. Is that, do you know? Out of country, okay. Yeah, out of country. It might be a Canadian. There was, uh, there was sort of a um, discussion about another one that withdrew that I think was out of state, but I'm not sure, certain what, Wait, are which you, one is what. Are, are you accurately saying that Miro is not going to dis decide to sell anything? No, Miro, it's the city council, right? The city council right, is going to make a, a decision be among three right, bids. bids tonight and whittle it down to two bids. And then those two bids will be decided on the 30th, right. the meeting of the 30th. So it's either three or two, and Miro uh, is not making any decisions, but he's certainly made a presentation, continues to make presentations about what he wants. And I think what the mayor has said what he wants to do is that he wants to sell it to the highest bidder for the most money. Is that, and he announced that. But Mark, I think, is quite correct that the decision will be up to city council. My question is, if city council goes the way that we, that I would like it to go, which is to sell it to a local co-op, um, would the mayor have the chance to veto that? Do you know? I don't think so. I don't believe so. Do you know? Do we know? I'm, I've not heard that uh -huh. in following the story. Mm -hmm. Even if the local co-op happened to be the, lar the uh, highest bidder. It isn't, though. Right. That's the point. Right, right. Um, and what he has said, I went to my NPA the other night simply because of this issue. Um, and my representatives, Sharon Bouchard, my representatives are Sharon Bouchard and Richard Dean. And Richard Dean, who is a Democrat and who is, uh, I think, quite pro Moreau, one of Moreau's uh, cohort, a member of his cohort, uh, was saying that it made sense to sell it to the highest bidder because if we don't, then Citibank can sue us because they won't get all the money that they, they won't, right. right, I guess. But, and that was his reason, and I think that's the mayor's reason, that they are not at this moment thinking about the great thing that could happen if the co-op bought it. They're thinking more in terms of bottom line. And but, I think that's sort of correct, isn't it? Right. But is that wrong? I don't know. Uh, to fit wrong, fiscally. I don't know. At yeah. least Alan Matson, who is the um, chair. chair of the local effort, disputes that. Yeah. And I, I don't have the figures or even don't understand all the mm -hmm. terms that, uh, on which he disputes that. But it is not clear that the the Citibank claim and especially the the uh, hypothesis that they're going to sue right. anybody over whatever is the case, although it does seem that uh, both Miro and the people that are at least online in seven days in Burlington Free Press and Digger that are talking about it, the commentary is largely uh, to agree with that. and uh, i I think, that that may not be true in a sophisticated analysis. I agree that 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 I that's I dispute it too, but I don't have the financial expertise to really comment on it. But even well, is that, if it does, were the true, does the highest bid does it cover the existing debt that uh, I think it's C supposed to. Citibank holds? Yeah, I think I okay. think that's what. So there Citi wouldn't be any deficiency in the event that we're correct. But but um, that's my understanding of the issue. But I wish that the city weren't being so bottom line kind of capitalist oriented. This is a great resource that the city now owns. So what are we losing by this going to a foreign, and when I use the term foreign, I mean even out of state. Also company. a private entity. Right. This is going to be a private entity that sure. will own it, right? One of the, and that's uh, one thing that we're losing 
assuming that that's correct at all, right. is that one of the companies, and I don't remember which, uh, uh, owns a TV station which accepts advertising from a pro-Nazi. So what you lose is the uh, political uh, normal that, for instance, Bur uh, Burlington would bring to the station, and it's under the control of God knows who, with God knows what limits. Right. And, Again, and also, probably going to the highest bidder in exactly. terms of advertising. Exactly. But not only that, the going to the highest bidder will be a private company. Of course, the co-op is also a private entity too. It's not city. With an agenda, either. sure. No, not necessarily with an agenda. No. Let me tell you why I think it should be controlled by the citizens. Because if it's if it's controlled by a co-op, remember that those are members, and they probably are going to be largely Burlingtonians who are right. members of the co-op. I was involved a while ago, a couple years ago, with this big struggle over Burlington Telecom that I got myself into. I was aware at the time that Burlington, uh, that there was a, a faction in the city that wanted to snatch Al Jazeera English off the air. Right. Burlington Telecom at that time offered Al Jazeera English, which I regarded as a very important voice in this community. Um, and there were only two cities in this country that had Al Jazeera English, Burlington Telecom and also Buckeye, Ohio. Why Buckeye? I would suspect that it's because it has a large Arab population. It's near oh, huh. Dearborn, Dearborn, Michigan, and, and so well, Yellow Springs in Ohio is always considered a, uh, a very liberal... But they didn't have it. It was right. Buckeye, and Buckeye okay. does have an Arab pop population. Oh, okay. So that's what I figured. Anyway, so I got involved really with Burlington Telecom at that time. And I, we had numbers of hearings on keeping Al Jazeera English on the air. And what we argued was it's a free speech issue. Sure. We didn't argue that it was pro-Arab or anti-Israel or pro-Israel or anti-U.S. It was simply a voice that had to be heard. A private company doesn't have to have Al Jazeera English. But we argued because it was a publicly owned utility that free speech is constitutionally protected. And we right. won that fight. And I couldn't believe the numbers of people that showed up in favor of Al Jazeera English. The people who were against it were like seven. Okay. And, and that's what I think. I think that especially... So the premise is that that, that, type of, uh, uh, that type of discretion on the part of the, uh, the, comp the utility they will, 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 will be gone. Uh, totally. Like, oh. For instance, one time Comcast called me and asked me why I didn't get Comcast services. And I said, because you guys don't have Al Jazeera English. And you know what they said to me? <laughs> Does anybody have Al Jazeera English? Why would anybody have Al Jazeera English in the United States? Well, that was why. That's why I got so involved in this controversy. And if you think about uh, you know, present news, no matter what you think about what Trump says or what the opposition says, mainstream media is not free. It is totally, I think, biased and totally controlled by the corporations. Well, there's we always need, an agenda. Right. We need to have alternate voices. And I believe that if citizens control Burlington Telecom, that it would be a venue for free speech. That well, idea will be preserved that's in the right. long term. I mean, if they don't, members can beat them up or something. But, you know, certainly if you sell this important uh, infrastructure to a private company, there's, it's going to be like every other private company and private media control. The, right? One of the arguments against um, Burlington Telecom being owned locally is that locals don't have sufficient um, experience right. and they don't have enormously deep pockets. All they right. have is people. Mm -hmm. right? And is there me, any validity to well, that? To me, well, probably, to me, the, no, for, I think there's no validity right, because we have in front of us the premier example of why that argument is wrong, which is to just think back, and it's completely analogous to the struggle between Shaw's and right, the co-op exactly, for I the was, local right, exactly. downtown supermarket. Exactly. And it was the same arguments. You know, Shaw's, they've got, they, they have a lot of experience. What these little guys sell uh, brown rice, you know? What do they know about anything? But is running a grocery store the same as a, a high-tech industry? First of all, you got to remember that the, the Burlington Telecom right now has a very excellent manager and a company which is already managing it. And it's turned Burlington Telecom around also financially. Okay, well that's an important thing and, for, and the, the for the bottom line crowd. Right, and the, uh. the co-op would keep that company. 
yeah. the uh, question about whether could, anyway. running a grocery store is similar, I think it's more complicated. You have far more uh, dealers to be dealing with. You have a membership to be dealing with on issues that are not strictly uh, dime, bottom dime issues. Uh, and uh, the, the, both the structure and the management of the Burlington Co-op, which is, by the way, now is, has the largest per capita membership of any in the country. And they're, they're, so they're expanding it to the south and end. They're, they're, it's so right. big that they, that, and so the whole idea that uh, local hicks can't take over, you know, a big complex operation has already been disproven in a situation that's completely analogous. So we've been down this path before. Yes, you, we have. You, uh, and Burlington Electric. Right. Burlington Electric is a municipal utility also. Yeah. And that happened in the 20s. Right. You know, I, I just, I don't understand the mayor's short-sightedness. This could make, bro really? this could, well, I guess I do. Well. I do, but I mean, need, <laughs> I mean, I think that the guy is a businessman. Why doesn't he see this as a huge business opportunity and a way to make Burlington special? You know, I don't, I don't, I think he's, I think he's, well, you just said it. He is very short-sighted. You know, he's short-sighted about a lot of economic decisions, you know. And who says that these big think companies... think it's short-sighted. I think the site is going over yeah, here right. instead yeah, of yeah, over yeah. here. Right. And has the same focal length, right. you know. But it's a different uh, angle of interest. Is, is it because uh, the administration's more familiar with that template? Yes, he's than, a developer. Yeah. He's a developer. He has never shown any huge interest and humane kind of development or alternate kind of development. He, of course, is trying to, is going to develop the downtown mall. Uh, he was very in favor. Right. Uh, all these basically for-profit developments that he says are going to provide affordable housing. There's no affordable housing in this city. And the stuff that he's putting in, for instance, in the mall, it's not going to be affordable. Right. It's a, it's, it, it's a joke kind of. That I, every day I'm struck by that because every day when I wander around Burlington, probably more now than when I taught at Burlington College, there's homeless everywhere, everywhere, and all the shelters are full. Nobody has any place that they can afford to rent. Very few people, it seems to me. You know. Yeah. The uh, going back to the question of control of content. Yeah. Um, we have an example of that today which maybe we can talk about later on the show. Right now we're talking about Burlington Telecom. But for instance, how many of you out there, this is Monday, know that yesterday there was a huge and consequential election Very. in Venezuela. It wasn't on any of the mainstream things, at least by the time I left my house. Uh, and, uh, and it was reported as being not reported. Uh, and where you where you found that out, by the way, was on Al Jazeera. Oh, really? Uh, Did you see it yes, online or something? Yeah, on, online on Al Jazeera, and um, and I believe RT too, which is also people. That's been it. taken off Burlington Telecom. Uh, I didn't know that. It was on Burlington Telecom. I used to, and, and RT, it frankly, is even better than Al Jazeera well, English. Okay, but anyway, we do not know that there was a big election yesterday in Venezuela. And we specifically don't know, and maybe it's why we don't know, is that Maduro and uh, Chavismo made enormous gains in by far the ma majority of the governorships that were to be elected. And it's, it's being celebrated down there as a huge um, uh, election victory, and here we don't even know about it. Do you suspect that the, uh, the the lack of reporting would have been a little different if the results it, were the opposite? It could oh, be, of yeah, and yeah. It, but, and I also suspect that if Burlington Telecom, were the, if the city of Burlington would own its telecommunications, it would not be neglected. Well, we're not neglecting by a co-op, right? Yeah, yeah, but we're not neglecting it either, which is another thing. You know, who says that a big important company will allow public access. I think they have to, maybe, to a certain extent, but not the way Burlington Telecom will. I mean, it allows us to be on making programs. I'm not certain that that, will, that, that, that occurs on Comcast, does it? Does I, it? I think the rules have changed since, uh, you know, in the, in the past couple of decades regarding having that public, public access requirement. 
my understanding is that it's not a requirement anymore. Right. Well, anyway, if that's the case, that's another thing that Burlington lo uh, loses. You know, there, there's lots of, there's at least three public channels. There's 16, 15, 16, and 17 in this channel. And it allows anybody really to make programs. Even and that's important. Us. Even us. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and the, yeah, the alternative is always going to go back to the highest bidder. Exactly. And that's yeah. really what I think this, that the mayor is going to recommend tonight. Well, he's already recommended. I, what? He's already recommended. Yeah, he already has it. recommended it. I don't have any clue of how the city council will go. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. There, people are so convinced nowadays of bottom line reasoning right. that very few, I would say, politicians have any idea of a vision. They're so anxious to protect what little we have, and I don't blame them for that because people have very little in this country anymore. But. Well, I think a yeah. smart thing for both City Council and Miro tonight delay. is to delay. Yeah, and too. the way you I can delay too. it is by cutting the three down to two, but one of the two is a Burlington t a local the ownership, yeah. is the co-op ownership. But you're assuming that the, uh, the, the mayor's admin the administration is sympathetic to this uh, co-op. No, no, no. I, mean, I, mean, I know they're, yeah, I know they're right, not. Right, right. But, what I'm but assuming is that we'll give that. another yeah. two weeks um, before for um, the powers that be to apply their power right. to convince you know more people to pull off this uh, sort of short-sighted, other-sighted bottom lineism. Yeah. And so that it can be acclaimed instead of a you know real struggle. I think that the time it's going to be uh, um, if the time right now, the, two, the extra two weeks, is more valuable than uh, excluding, right. uh, which will right. be very right. very. Um, but it's but it's valuable for whom? But it, it's it's unvaluable. It's anti value. It's assuming the administration cares about that. But but it's no, it does <laughs> care to some degree. It cares about getting reelected. It's anti valuable. Right. If it's a somebody something that people point out, oh, this demonic, uh, you know, Miro administration mm -hmm. and all of that, to take away that thorn in the side, to take away those two weeks of by affording that, yeah, the additional by time. giving, but yeah, I mean, it's I think like that's the reasonable. Liberal front. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's my prediction. But no. but uh, do you think do folks think that that's actually going to happen? I don't know. I think he's getting nervous because as some of the city councilors, uh, there. are there's virtually no opposition on city council. There's a couple, maybe, of people who are who can be in opposition to the mayor, and that's the progressive. He was outlined in seven days, Max Tracy in Ward Two, I think, and actually the two <laughs> kind of Republicans can sometimes oppose him too. And that's Kurt Wright and, and Hartnett. But otherwise, the council is pretty democratic, and they go with the mayor. So, but based on what you're saying, it seems like this is pretty much. A done deal. A done deal. Well, that's why we have to go tonight. So I'll remind all of our viewers. If you were a Democrat, yeah, you would want to postpone, yeah, the uh, um, allegations about uh, Democratic manipulation. Right. You would want to say, see. You know, we have, we really have two representatives now. We're not, we're not excluding. The bad and lefties. They might go with that. They might, that might go. They might go with that. Do you feel that the issues have the way you both eloquently expressed them eloquently. on this program? Uh, do you think uh, the citizens of Burlington have been? They've been properly? overwhelmingly all the calls, every poll that's been taken. They want the co-op. Okay. Overwhelmingly. I mean, that's but what I learned at my I, MBA what, the other yeah, night. But who we, are, are we preaching to the choir? Or are we? Are we? The three no, of us. No, no, no. So uh, I would say that if you follow polls. the Burlington Free Press yeah. comments, yeah, yeah, not overwhelmingly that at all. No, yeah. I know, but I was, I was got a report on all the polls, the phone polls that were being taken. Maybe you're right. The Free Press certainly isn't pro co-op. Well, and I think even seven days is not. I know uh, because uh, they're thinking also the bottom line. Not seven days. The readers of the oh, people who oh, choose yeah. the, the comments. comments. Yeah, I'm right. not talking about the articles. Yeah. could be because there was a scandal about Burlington Telecom, which I don't know if we need to get into it right, or not. Right, right. And I was going to actually well, ask it's about often that. Often referred to. Yeah. When do I get my seventeen yeah, million dollars not, back? Yeah, you know, and what I was kind yeah. of 
aware of that scandal because at that time Jonathan Leopold was on our board. So I, I actually talked to him about what had happened and, and so forth. And I came out with thinking, what did he do? He took seven. To, he took. Um, he paid Burlington Telecom seventeen million dollars of city money to a city entity. I don't know what. I mean. And, and I understood that the council was aware of it. It was to save Burlington Telecom. Now, was that a bad deal? This was during the KISS administration? Yes. And did that ultimately lead to his demise? It demise really, as a politician yes, in the yes, state? Yes, it did. It, it did. It the led demise to, of the Progs. Right. Yeah, it was right. really led to the demise of the Progs. Absolutely. Because KISS and Leopold was portrayed as a, as a sort of a crook. I don't. I never, I, you know, I wasn't aware of the ins and outs of it, but I came down on the side of Leopold, and he wasn't my favorite person in the world either. I'd fought with him numbers of times on other issues, especially right. when he was on the Burlington College Board. Yeah. But um, it was misappropriation. I don't, I, I don't know well, that. I, it, I wouldn't use that word because he wasn't convicted of that either. He went to court. The Republicans sued him. It was appealed. A couple of Republicans sued him, not not all of them. A couple of so them. So this was a, a this was a criminal matter, or was it no, a civil matter? Civil matter, and they and they sued him like in a taxpayer suit, maybe, okay. uh, which is very hard to get in the first place, a taxpayer suit. And then it went, and they uh, the court found for Leopold, right. and then they appealed it, and the Supreme Court upheld that. So I don't really know if he quote misappropriated funds. He certainly didn't think so. There may be a technical meaning for that word. Yeah. I mean, you guys are lawyers. And, yeah, but there's uh, no technical meaning no, for it. I mean, it's well, like I mean, but it's if a, you take education funds, right, and put them to build a road, even though they're both state funds, it's not what that's supposed to be done with. I, I would call yeah, it. Yeah, but the other allegation I guess was you got to look at the intent. Uh, right. Absolutely, you have to look at the intent. That's why I said when I, I, I talked to him about it. In fact, I went down to city council and spoke on his behalf because I, he did not intend that. What his intention was was to save Burlington Telecom, right? I mean, I don't know. Is that misappropriation? I don't know. I, I don't know. I just know that he didn't think so, and there wasn't an intent that I could see that he did. Okay, but he was basically run out of town about but it. But a lot of people have said exactly this. Where's my 17 yes. million? I want right. my right 17 that. million right. back. And that's right. been an effective, right. and, yeah. And, and right. Uh, right. you know, if these guys are gonna pay $50,000, uh, $50 million, and these guys are gonna pay $35 million, I'm gonna get my 17 million back easier. With, with the 50 million right. folks, right. Yes. right. Right, but there's a lot of people also who say they don't care, they wanna own, they want the co-op to own it. Right. So I don't know, and I mean, people are so aware now of corruption, and um, and and that, and that, and Mark's right. It was the demise of the Progs. Next time around, Kiss was out, and Moreau was in. Right. So Is could this decision it? have been put up for a referendum, or should it have? It, 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 you can always do a referendum. It, it's the question is whether it's binding or not. Whether it's binding. And it would not have been binding because the city has the. Well, I guess if you get enough signatures, you can get a binding referendum. Right. But I've done I've done those before, not binding. Um, but anyway, so it's a very important issue, I think, for the future of Burlington, um, and it's well, on tonight. I, I would like to expand the issue. Actually, I think it, it's an important issue. This sounds yeah. ridiculous, but it's an important issue for the the country. I agree with that. Uh, I totally and agree the, with that. And, 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 and because it's an important issue for the country, it's an important issue for the world. Uh, because what this country does is so determinative of what's going on. Uh, most sure, of I mean, it's certainly, we, we set and, trends, especially and, in the area of media. And yeah. uh, um, the dimensions that I'm thinking about are whether we want to continue in this kind of... Um, narrow-framed capitalist mode or to think more normatively right. Right. about cooperative mode, to exactly. think more exactly. normatively mm -hmm. about communities owning things and not the 1% or this particular owning things. And this little decision in Burlington is exactly about that, is, is whether we want to say, oh, this person is paying 50, this person is 35, it's clear. Or we want to say, wait a minute, 
the value of what we're doing has to do with this organization, has to do with the level of community input of the future, right. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that it's a much bigger issue than the... the I agree, the, especially since city, I mean worldwide, if you want to look at where resistance politics are really being practiced to capitalism, it's in cities. It's not in it's oh, it's in cities. Mind. It's like cities like Barcelona, which has which has a female mayor who is very progressive, um, and is advocating for cities to take control of their own economies, versus private companies. But it's beyond that. It's it's in the mind is what I'm saying. The first thing you think of is power of a person or of a a small group of people who are used to exercising power. And the, sort of the last thing you think of is, oh, you know, we should all the, this, yeah. this, yeah. we should all have the, divide this power. And, you know, and that goes into workers' co-ops and owner co-ops and co community gardens, community Just like we think about in Cuba. Right. Sure. And so... Do we have a precedent for this in the context of media? No, that's why it's so important to well, set we one. We do have right? a precedent uh, in the context in the right. of the co-op. Yeah. In yeah. Burlington. Uh, and I, I think meant I meant worldwide, uh, right. because I mean what no, you're I'm, talking I'm about is an important issue. We we could be building on Burlington being a leader in the thought process of communitarianism. We're, we've already got a good start on that. Yeah, and we Vermont do. Vermont right. already has a good start on that in the country, and so if you just allow this as as thought issue to spread, uh, I think it's it's very very important. And if we, if too. Burlington collapses, it's already an uh, understanding of cooperatives down into who's paying the most money at this moment. That's that's a big collapse. It's much bigger than the loss. I of can't Burlington. I can't agree with you more. I really think it's an incredibly important issue, and I and I, it would certainly set a trend. I think that's absolutely. that's that's, that's what I'm that's what I'm trend. that's what I'm getting. We've Look at the co-op was a similar battle. It right. was really a heated battle, but at that time we had a mayor that was a progressive. I'm not a progressive, never been a progressive, but... But I'm talking about in the context of media. I mean, given yeah, the way right, the media right. is going, you know, with social media and the importance of media and right. politics and the fact that the two seem to be in bed with one another now. Exactly. Uh, well, I mean, this would be an aberration. Exactly, and it would be, it's, it's really, it, to me, the most important thing we can do to resist Trumpism is to build alternate institutions. That's why I think that, that Burlington College was such a tragedy. That was truly an alternate institution, and now that's gone. And, the, and if we really want to resist the trend, globalization and global power of the uh, corporations. Of the few. Uh, right. right, we have to build alternate institutions, and, and that's why I think that he's totally right. It, it would set a model for the whole world, and it would guarantee at least a little bit free speech, which mainstream media doesn't even have any of, as far as I can tell, you know? Um, but anyway, ooh, anyway, I think maybe we should remind our viewers that uh, Burlington Telecom, the uh, meeting tonight is at City Hall, and public gets a chance to speak about that at 7.30, I think, right? So please come. And say anything you want, by the way. I welcome free speech. In fact, because of my conflict about Al Jazeera, because I fought so hard about Al Jazeera, I was on the uh, advisory board for Burlington Telecom at one time. Not the, not the important one, the less important one. There was a little advisory committee. And I fought for free speech so much that I got on that committee. And, I, and all the people that were on that committee were against Burlington Telecom and against Al Jazeera. But I fought, had fought so hard that one guy took a kind of liking to me and got Glenn Beck to have me on, the, on his show. Oh. And I was on Glenn Beck, you know who he is or not, sure. uh, advocating free speech. And because and the question was, should we have Glenn Beck on, Al J on uh, Burlington Telecom? I said, certainly. Why not? Well, I mean, free speech is free exactly. speech. Free, if, this, if, 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 there so condition, if there are conditions placed on it, it's no longer free right. speech. So, uh, they, but they were so shocked that uh, I was invited that the one guy, who's Jeffrey Kaufman, who was on that committee, got me to speak on Glenn Beck's show. But anyway, so we probably so, should. And, but, and rem remember that if I'm correct, which may not be the case, it's not just tonight. If you're watching this in a replay, there's another two weeks, which Maybe. may be where you're watching this, where this question is still in play.
and that there's still time to there if I'm right. I mean, I could be wrong, and the co-op is out tonight, you know. Uh, but uh, in which case, it's too late. Too, yeah. in, too late. <laughs> yeah. But maybe we should talk a little bit about what else is going on, and and maybe we should switch our attention a little bit to Europe, where there's a struggle going on between uh, the central government of Spain and a and a province in the northeast of Spain. Correct. Northeast. Correct. Catalonia. And um, that's a big political issue right now about whether or not Catalonia will become independent from Spain. It's important because those kinds of local struggles are occurring throughout Europe, really. Catalonia is not the only one. There's and in Western Europe, aside Western. from Scotland, uh, that's, that's, this is new mm, for, yeah, uh, for quite some time. There's been one, though, that's been ongoing forever, and that's Ireland. Northern Ireland. Right, sure. yeah, Ireland and Scotland who were taken over by the English centuries ago, have always wanted to be independent. Northern Ireland doesn't, but Ireland has wanted to be independent. Northern Ireland wants to stay a part of Britain, correct? Right. Okay, anyway, so um, Kurt especially had some strong feelings about that, and, and so maybe we would start there. Is it a good idea that Catalonia break away from Spain or not? They had a referendum, and like 90% of Catalonians in that referendum voted to separate, right? Well, let's right. let's unpack that. Yeah, I mean about the referendum, about the ninety percent, and all of that. Right. So, what okay. does it all mean? Okay. Well, what do you think it means? Uh, it's well, 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 it's very well, clear the intention. Yeah. What's it? What's it? What, yeah, what's the referendum it? or the uh, independence movement? No. Well, the referendum. All right. What happened? What kind of referendum was? Who got to vote? What were the conditions under which they were voting, et cetera? Mm-hmm. Do you know? No. Okay, do you? <laughs> well, I mean, it was the Catalonians, right? Well, the, uh, that would first of all, the election, right, right. The election right. was, before it went, declared unconstitutional and illegal. So if anybody was going to the polls at all, they would be performing a criminal act with respect to their national government. So it's as if, you know, the U.S. said, I know Burlington, you're going to vote on Burlington Telecom uh, on Monday night, but that's illegal if you show up, you're subject to arrest. And not only did they say that, but they brought out the, the National Guard and the Army, who did everything they could to interrupt the uh, election going on. And so the turnout among Catalonians was not great. Uh, I think 60% didn't get to the polls or something in there. But and it was, it was a relatively a bloody affair for and, Western European yeah, standards. Right. Yes. Right. And oh. the people who did come were subject to violence. Right. So that's, that's first of all, what the referendum was, mm -hmm. right? It taking place in that. So then, what do you make of the vo of that particular vote? You say, well, of the people who voted, ninety percent voted uh, pro independence. Right. Well, so what does that mean? I'm not sure what it re what it really means well, under those conditions. Right. Well, anyway, right. anyway, Kurt, I think you had some thoughts. Well, I mean, it doesn't have any legal binding effect. So it never did. did never it? did. But who decides what's legal? Well, that's that's the issue here. I mean, right. if you've got an independent entity, you know, they can make a claim that they decide, the people decide, mm -hmm. uh, and the government of Spain may think differently. All right, okay, but you seem to favor keeping the Spanish state together. I do. Okay, and maybe you could say why, rather than because um, I don't think every anybody, I don't think other people think that way. Uh, I, I believe that the model of the European Union has been relatively successful in the respect that there, uh, th for an inordinate amount of time, uh, there has not been a war in Western Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, the Germans, the French, and the uh, British. and the British have uh, enjoyed a a relatively long time period of peace, which is really unprecedented. And you put Spain in that category, I too? I put Spain in that category, and Spain, too. Spain is part of Europe. Certainly. Okay. All right. And the Balkanization in Eastern Europe didn't work out too well in, uh, in, in the Southern ba Balkans. 
in you mean Yugoslavia. like Yugoslavia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that and so you would say that the Catalans should not become independent. I don't believe they should. Uh huh. Or Scotland. Uh, <laughs> I have my own views about Scotland, but uh, ultimately, no, I, I don't. Or Brexit. Right. I'm certainly against Brexit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you were going to, if I were going to counter that, what I would, if you don't mind, I would counter sure. that by saying I don't think the EU has been terrifically successful in stopping war, and I'll tell you why. They don't go to war against each other, those tribes. Right. The British which, tribe doesn't which, go anymore against the German tribe anymore. Which like they, they did. Which they did in World frequently. War One and Round and, Two, and, World and, War Two. And before that. Right. right. Okay. But they do go to war in other parts of the world because right. the EU is not only a market arrangement, it is also a military alliance. And it's, sure. and it's called NATO. And NATO goes to war everywhere. Well, NATO and the EU, you're, you're claiming that these are the, yes. the same exact Pretty much. things? Yes, I am. I'm saying that the EU is a financial arrangement, barely, and not a democratic arrangement either. It is not democratic. I mean, look at the Greeks. They're not particularly democratic. It's a bank, sure. and it has a military alliance. So no, they don't fight with each other anymore, except they're damn determined to fight with Russia. But... They go to war everywhere else. Anywhere the United States tells them to go to war, they go to war. Is that any different from the way it always was? No, it was, no. It, they used maybe to go without, to war. Maybe without the direction of the United States. No, they used but, to go to war against each other, as we right. know. In addition to other places. Right. And now they don't go to war with each other, but they go to war in Afghanistan. They go to war in the Middle East. They go to I, war. I don't entirely agree with that. They go to economic war with each other. They're That's true, too. Well, they don't really, do they? Yes, of course. I mean, who's forcing Greece into the situation it's in? Germany. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, I, I think... Uh, Depending on how we're defining war, then. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm defining it militarily. He's right, defining I was. It. Economically. What? Well, no, I'm not defining it economically. I'm saying it's a question of uh, power and power relations. And there's the same power relations going on in the EU as, uh, as it, always. As it doesn't have uh, people shooting each other yet, except it will and it, it can, is. you know, uh, if uh, the natives get too uppity. Well, they haven't shot the Greeks yet, have they? No. <laughs> but, you know, they've they ruined shot, them. They haven't shot us yet, but they and they're not going. You think they're going to shoot oh, Americans? Of course, what not, are you talking not about? the EU, but <laughs> power. Power resists uh, um, usurpation, you know, and they see it any other thing. And and I think you know it's it's only a little bit of time until the guns are pulled out against us. Um, because there are so many guns there. There's a reason that the, oh, we should the, talk the, about the, that. That the, that the police are being militarized, you know. It's not so they, uh, you know, have fun shining their weapons. But they do that too, I bet you. Well, um, so what's going what, what's to be the end result here? Well, I, I did read some interesting stuff about why Catalonia should stay within Spain, and it gave me some pause in a way, but um, my feeling is that they should be independent, as you know. But... One of the reasons is, is that Catal they, they want independence is that Catalonia, as you probably know, is the richest part of Spain. Right. right. And it is the most prosperous part, and it drives the engine of the whole Spanish state, I suppose, in terms of taxation, I guess, or sure. whatever. Sure, especially given the economic difficulties that Spain's and Spain has faced in, a lot in the last of 10 years. In fact, Spain right. probably has suffered because it's part of the EU financially. In fact, that whole southern tier of states, interestingly enough, the Catholic states, yeah. Italy, Spain, and Greece, which is not Catholic, but it's Orthodox. But all of those have suffered from the domination of the Northern European countries, right? Financially. Well, has it? Have they suffered, or have they always been slightly poorer than? They've the always been slightly poorer, but I don't know if Greece was bankrupt as it is now. Is it? Has it been? I don't think so. All right. But um, anyway, but there was that thought that the Catalans and the Scots, which I found really cu curious. Uh, they are the richer parts of their uh, states, including Scotland, which I find really That's questionable. That's difficult to believe and compared to London. To believe. I know. Uh, um, uh, Want to take all their money and, and simply, you know, bag the rest of Spain and the Spanish and other Spanish citizens. Like apparently the poor part of Spain is Andalusia, which is where the Moors were actually right. 
And so that tends to be poorer than the rest of Spain. And so the article is pointing out that the Catalans just want to write the Andalusians off and not contribute to their well-being. That has some ring of truth to me, but not enough to say that they shouldn't be independent, you know? But I don't know. I mean, what, um, you could make this argument, too, about the United States. Should Lincoln have allowed the secession of the South, right? Or Vermont uh, Second this, Republic. Right. right. Should the United States allow that? I'm not familiar with the, well, uh, I was going to go back to a prior point. I'm not familiar with the Spanish Constitution, but right. I don't know if there's anything in the Constitution that had provided for an exit strategy. No, I bet that, I bet there's not. That's what the Spanish government is arguing, right? Right. That, and that's ultimately what Lincoln argued, that there's, there was no exit strategy when the states got together. But the, state, the, the southern union. states thought there was. Not in the Constitution. I don't know what no, constitution they were Well, what they, they argued, I think what Calhoun argued was, look at this constitution was made up of an agreement of all the states. Right. And we agreed to this, and we cannot agree. Yeah. Well, or that was right. ultimately their argument. Right, yeah. right. And it also, the consequences are once you join, you can never, cha nothing can change. It can only accrete. Right. And there's no opposite direction to accretion, which leads you to uh, numbers that don't make sense anymore in terms of uh, Republican Size and governability. Republican. So what is Catalonia? Why is it even part of Spain? I mean, was there an agreement? I don't think so, was there? Do you know? I don't, that I don't know. I don't think so. Right. I think what happened was that Spain conquered those regions, just like it happened in France. I mean, and here. France, well, but, right. but there was an agreement in that a constitution. All the states agreed. No, I'm talking, well, well, I'm talking about the western all the territories. States, yeah, all yeah. the states of 13. Right. Well, well, yeah, but so what? They were the 13 also. Some of those were the ones that wanted to secede. Okay, sure. so they said, we don't agree anymore. Should they put an exit strategy in the Constitution? No. When someone doesn't like it, this is what you, no. these are the steps I, that are well, taken to leave. Maybe, but you know, you can also argue at least in the I mean, US. you do in businesses and, and nonprofits, mm -hmm. there's an exit strategy. When, uh, absolutely. I don't know. I felt strategy. pretty trapped by my contract, <laughs> frankly, at Burlington College. <laughs> I felt really trapped. Well, I mean, but you have severance packages and things like that and, you know, and employment contracts when you, when you leave. They may not be generous. Mm -hmm. uh, so that they keep you trapped, but nevertheless, they may be there. Yeah, I know. I don't think there should, but I don't think they, I don't know what the Spanish Constitution, even when it was formed. I don't either. Okay. I don't so, pretend so, to. So uh, in my mind, the Spanish state is a monarchy, um, and that it it gathered its territory by conquest. I would guess, right? Like the Basque Country, and and really, I suppose with Ferdinand and Isabella, didn't it? I mean, isn't that when the Spanish state kicked out the Arabs, kicked out the Jews, and formed Spain as a Christian monarchy? I think, right? Yeah, well, right, at least it's second coming anyway, yeah. I don't know if it was, if, I don't know Prior how much Moors. territory, right. Yeah. I don't know how much territory the Spanish state uh, claims, but that's how they created the Spanish state, I think, is out of war, so, unlike the United so States. An interesting oh, analogy. that's not true. Even that's not that. true. No, I know. I'm, right. Right. Which I'm is, wrong about Which that. is uh, uh, perhaps more understandable for us is Quebec. Yeah. You know? Right. Here sure. you have this, con this exactly. the country uh, or a section of Canada that speaks a different language, and it really does speak a different language, you know, and has different cultural uh, icons. and. Uh, and the argument for it becoming a separate country is does not seem absurd. Right? I, it doesn't seem to me absurd about Catalonia either, since it yes. does speak. Okay, a, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. right. It, it it has a different language. It has a different culture, right? So, do we have an idea of what's going to happen? Is Spain going to? What, what I think Spain will go in, to war in, about in, it in Catalonia. Well, what is presently proposed? is that the Catalonian government ha had until today, it was extended by Spain until Thursday, right. to make a clear announcement Ooh. about whether it is declaring independence. Sure. Which is not yet done. No, it hasn't been done. To, no. And, but and, and Catalonia uh, government would like, before it makes a clear announcement 
about whether it's demanding independence, would like another, I think it's four months of public debate and back and forth. And negotiation. And maybe. negotiation. So there's one deadline, which presumably is backed by the army and the police on <sighs> Thursday. There's another deadline <laughs> four months down the road. Uh, Spanish aren't going to give in on that, though. Do you think? So that, no. But that's where things are right now. I don't think I'm wondering how much of this is a negotiation ploy uh, but to, can to secure greater autonomy. But I mean, they, ultimately, yeah. is the place going to well, become like... That's what they're saying. Yeah. That's, you know, that's but they what have we, a lot of autonomy. Well, to increase it, I mean, yeah. Mm, right, I mean, but, you know, it's not like the... I don't think. Like from what China I, and Tibet? No, yeah. I don't, I, yeah. it's not like Catalonia is... I don't know this, of course, but it's not like it's terribly oppressed. It's just they want to that, not that, be a part of Spain. Right. You but know? The, the terminology that they're using is oppression and but repression. I would guess it's, I don't Maybe know more this. reactionary to what's been, you know, going on since the referendum or to, since that oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they've wanted to become independent for decades. Oh, the Basques. And the Basques, too. Yeah. And I think that through that, both of those struggles, they have achieved a certain amount of autonomy. Um, it's just not enough. They want to be on their own, I guess, right? And Is this going to happen? I think the Spanish will, state will go to war with them. Spanish state and will probably the European Thursday, Union. Or will no, the European Union. On, on, Spain's, on Spain's side. They will be on Spain's side they because they've, 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 already, already, they've already formally declared yeah. But what are they going to do about it, the European Union? Again, uh, send NATO in? So provide support. A, so it's a big test also yeah. for the EU. Yeah. yeah. Well, the EU, it seems to me, is falling apart. And that this is going to be a further falling apart. Don't you think? I mean, I don't think the, Europe, the EU is terribly popular in, in Europe, is it? Except among the financially, financial elites. Like, look what happened with Brexit. Uh, look what happened with Marine Le Pen and her vote in France. Of course, Macron. I mean, was I elected. think there's a popular sentiment in parts of in, in parts of Europe. I'm going to say that believe in, in greater independence and greater autonomy. But I think, uh, again, I'm not citing any polls, but mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, a fair majority of people believe that they want to stay in the European Union in Europe. Otherwise, these these quote unquote fringe parties, the you know alternatives for Germany or uh, Marine Le Pen's party, probably would have done a little better at the polls. I mean, most of them be. polled. You know, they they got about ten percent of the vote. Did France Marie, and I thought Germany. Marine Le Pen got more than that, but did I'm she? Not, I don't know. What? It, okay, twelve. Yeah. Okay. But she she was all she was associated with something that the Europeans don't want back, and she was associated really with fascism and Nazism, I think, wasn't she? Oh, so yeah. was the alternative for Germany, similarly, yes, they were right. painted as, you know, the new Nazi movement or the, you know, the right-wing German movement. But, but didn't they do rather well in these last elections yes. or not? Yeah, yeah, they did. But, the per, again, the percent, yeah. they, they, were, they did well, but, I mean, right. we're, again, we're talking right. about 10%. Right. You know, right. they're not polling. And that was mostly in more of the depressed eastern part of the country. Right. That hasn't caught up to the... Uh, you know, the West. I think if Catalonia really wants to become independent, the Spanish will invade them. That's what I think. But I agree. You know, and that's not good news. But I think that I don't think Spain will stand for it. I really don't. Well, it'll be difficult. I think there'll be pressure on Spain to invade, even if that wasn't their intent by the rest of Europe, because I think it would be a driving yes. inspiration for other independence I movements. I do too. I do, that's what I think, and I think that, in other words, the European wars are not over. Well, we'll see what, right? see what happens. And, but they're not in my mind anyway, like I said, because it, I think NATO has given Europe a military alliance that does go to war. They just don't fight that much with each other, right. although they, they fight with Russia. I really wanted to say something about Russia, because in all the hysteria against Russia, in all that hysteria that's going on right now, who ever has mentioned that Russia was our ally in World War II? No mention of that. I haven't seen that mentioned once. Have you? Well, I mean, they were our ally after cutting a deal with the Germans, and, and, the, and that deal backfired, and that's how they sort of became it our ally. It doesn't matter. They were allies. They lost 22 million Absol people. Absolutely. There's no question. In, yeah, in, 25 in fighting, million even, and if, possibly. And if you want to make an argument, you could really argue that the, I think, that the Russians beat back Nazism. 
They absolutely did. Okay, so where yeah. is that recognition that at one point Russia was our, twice, World War One and World War Two, oh. no recognition that we were ever able to deal with Russia? No, I mean, I think it would be a lot more convenient if we could just say that we defeated the Nazis. Yes, but well, we didn't. that's what we've said. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't. Yeah. But we the, didn't. Yeah. And also... And that's a very I, unpopular I thing to say. What? This is free speech TV, but it's very unpopular to say that the Russians beat the Nazis. That's a very it's, unpopular position. Very, right. I mean, it's it's, it's factually based, but uh, but it's not popular. Exactly. It's the popularity is, you know, uh, the, the Normandy invasion, which was, you know, again, a... 44. Yeah. It was, you know, it was an amazing uh, military enterprise. Which but it was. It, right. But it, it, you know, it wasn't ultimately what defeated the Nazis. Right, right. It, it rid France of them, I guess, right? Right. Right. What I, I don't agree with that. I mean, I think it's commonly understood that the main fighting, you know, that defeated Germany was on the Eastern Front. Yes. And, oh, that's what we're saying. Yeah, that's, that's what we're, what we're saying. saying. You know, the Stalingrad. Yeah. yeah. Right. That, that, Absolutely. That's commonly understood. What I don't agree with what you're saying is that it was ever commonly understood that in spite of that fact that a lot, we were allied with Russia because yeah. we weren't because they were commies. Yeah, we were well, we, but we were... I wanted to take your toothpaste. I know. You know it's but like, no, I mean, it was a marriage of convenience after the Germans double-crossed and the And Russians. the, uh, you know, the, the plotting, and the dropping of the also. bombs were was directed not at Japan, was directed at Russia, you know, in terms of uh, who gets the goods when the war is over. I mean, we were we were against the Russians since 1917. Right. Sure. Right. Since right. 1905. Exactly. Yeah. Before. Just like we're right. against the Cubans right. always. Right. It's the same deal. So right. I I don't I don't think we've ever thought of the Russians as allies. We've thought of them as allies. Um, I mean, look. I mean, the question. Uh, you know, it's often been questioned whether they're even considered European. I know. From a racial standpoint. I know. Yeah. That's what so yeah. I find so interesting about the argument of Europe. Huh. Russia's a European power, but NATO is directed against them. Right. But Russia and, is. And the in invitation Europe. wasn't extended in the 90s when Never. there was there Never. was talk about it. I know there was, there was talk, talk about, about it. it. But, I, but uh, did you but ever think it was going to happen? I never did. I didn't know what to think then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was surprised when the wall came down. So. I was older than you. Anyway, that was a big question for Russians. Yeah. In the, and in the 19th century, and uh, you know, uh, Tchaikovsky, for instance, was being tugged at by the Russian composers who wanted him to not to be so European. German. They right. wanted oh, him yeah. n not to travel in Europe so much. They wanted him to exploit Russian folk melodies more and, and all of that. And it really was a, a big scission there, mm -hmm. right for this one person over internal Russian feuds about, no, Russians are different. Uh, you know, and our our f the Russian folk right. is completely Slavic. different. First of all, they're yeah, Slavic. They're Slavic. Right. Yeah. But, but but there was a uh, but there was also resistance from the other side, too. Yes, excluding them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't That's just simply an internal Russian struggle. It was no, a no, struggle no, no, from right, the European right. Uh, exactly. soul right. too. Right. But it's but also it true in the Ukraine. Yes. I mean, that's really yeah. a lot of what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah. But we only have two minutes left. We didn't get to talk about guns. <laughs> okay. I, th right. I think guns are going to continue to be an issue. Right, right, right. So yeah. we better think, oh, think it through. Those who support the Second Amendment no, no, and those no, who no. don't. No, no, no. We're Maybe just, we'll talk about we'll it next, next show. Yeah. The, yeah. Wait for yeah. the next um, big gun event. Oh, no, I don't want to wait for the big and gun we'll event. There's always big gun events. Yeah, well, Hopefully there I mean. won't be one. Yeah. By right. next right. month, we'll have another one to talk about. This. Okay, all right. So I guess we'll There's see you next. a lot of bullets. What? A lot of bullets. I know. Okay, so we'll see you maybe in a month or so. Thanks for joining us.